Um, so here I want to talk about culture. This is really uh, another one of my favorite topics. Um, so culture, ideas, beliefs, and behaviors of a particular organization or group, or sometimes they're, they're groups within an organization. And there are also habits that people have formed over time uh, and how people respond to challenge or pressure uh, or discomfort. I like to say culture is behavior that leadership allows. And I say that because culture eats strategy for breakfast. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard this, but you know, to be honest, it doesn't just eat it for breakfast. It's lunch, it's dinner, it's dessert. So for those who are actively coaching or, or on an agile team, or just in general, you're trying to implement a strategy at your organization, I'm sure you've run into um, situations that kept you or your teams from being able to mature or move forward. So, you know, it's, you know, because we, we've got, and it, it, this happens because as humans, we like to do what we're comfortable with. We like to do what we feel that works. Um, and let's be honest, generally humans, we don't like change. Um, so because we don't like change, there's the fear of the unknown, right? And culture affects how organizations are able to align with strategy. So um, talking about um, culture shift, so what are some things that we can do to help prepare our organization for that culture shift? One of the things that I like is uh, doing an audit or uh, like audit and the organization's culture. So if it's within your particular business unit or your, your, your department or whatnot, um, you can send out surveys to ask folks like, hey, we are thinking about making these changes. What are your thoughts? Or it could be, how do you currently feel? And the, the, these can be anonymous surveys and they probably should be anonymous sur surveys so that people feel like they can speak up without being punished. Um, so conducting a, a, an audit of your organization um, to help you identify those written and unspoken norms. Also, you need to be able to lead the change. So becoming a learning leader is really imperative. Uh, and you do that by committing to relentless you know, improvement and promoting a culture of innovation. You want to be able to foster conti uh, that continuous learning culture. So for organizations to continue to evolve, it's imperative to, um, you know, uh, it, it's imperative to, show that I'm learning, um, so I want you to learn too. Maybe if you're a leader within an organization, if, if you have a team that's going through an agile training class, or let me back up, a scrum or a particular framework uh, training class, maybe join them. Show them that you're open to learning just as much as they are. Another thing to think about is hiring the the right the attitude the right attitude and and for your, your culture so if you're thinking about moving to uh an an agile mindset and embracing some of the frameworks which we'll talk about in a little bit then you want to make sure that the new folks that you're bringing on is aligned right so you don't want to bring in someone that is is not open to change um, because that's going to hinder your organization's ability to grow. Uh, and sometimes you may want to partner with an external consultant. You may want to partner with um, not just someone from an agile coaching perspective, but someone who can help you make that organizational, like that shift. So maybe an organizational um, development coach. <laughs>